I came from a family of three girls, and I felt like I had the perfect life. I was the happiest little five and six year old and had so much fun as a child. I struggled for years in my childhood with watching my family suffer. It, um, it tore our family apart. I went down the path of self-injury, a suicide attempt, very depressed. This could be happening to your child. This could be happening to your next door neighbor, your best friend you've known your entire childhood, and you had no idea because of the shame that people carry. When I was a kindergartner, um, I had been asked by my best friend Ashley to spend the night. And I was excited, that little kid going off to my first sleepover. And after watching a Little Mermaid, we went into her room to go to sleep. She climbed up in her bed and me on the ground in my little sleeping bag, fell asleep, and eventually I woke up to the bedroom door opening and looked over there and there her uncle was. I thought he was checking to make sure we were asleep. And instead he closed the door, came down to where I was on the ground, told me to be quiet, and I did. I stayed quiet, he sexually abused me, and told me this is our little secret, no one will believe you, I know where you live, Aaron, I'll come get you. I pinky promised my best friend I would never tell anybody what her uncle was doing. What is your name? Aaron, and, and how old are you? Eight. My abuse ended when I was eight and a half and we moved. Suddenly I'm going to a new school, making new friends. Little did I realize by moving was getting me that much closer to the next perpetrator in my life. This time, it was my cousin Brian. Wake up to him sexually abusing me, and for the next almost two years, he repeatedly tells me, this is our secret, no one will believe you, you have no proof that I did this. And I believed it. I believed him that no one would believe me. So I stayed silent because my only education came from these perpetrators. At 13 years old, my 11-year-old sister came to me with the same secret. My little sister blurted out the words, Brian's gross, and I knew instantly what that meant and was just filled with anger and rage. So we broke our silence, our abuse ended, we claimed our voice, and that was the first step in moving forward and healing our lives. Because I had my parents' support and believing my sister and I, I wanted other people to realize that there is support for them out there as well. Looking back on my childhood, I learned tornado drills, bus drills, fire drills. Yet there was nothing on how to speak up and tell if you're being abused. So I created Aaron's Law in my home state of Illinois. Back in 2010, I was working my full-time master's level job as a counselor working with youth. I quit my job, tried to figure out a way of how I was going to explain to people that, you know, I'm going to speak about educating kids on the prevention of abuse because my own state lawmaker said, Aaron, we don't talk about that in society. They will never teach this in school. And I made it my mission not just to get this passed in Illinois. Well, I made it a mission to travel to all 50 states, testifying to lawmakers on the importance on this. And I tell these lawmakers I'm not going away. This is something that everyone should stand behind. Aaron's law requires every year child sexual abuse to be taught in public schools. So once a year, students must be informed on personal body safety, on how to speak up and tell the differences between safe and unsafe touch, safe and unsafe secrets, and give kids these voice and educate our educators on warning signs to look for. You know, how to properly handle when a child discloses abuse. And there are multiple stories as a result of Aaron's law being passed. We need to end the stigma and shame around this subject. Legislators, parents, teachers, they need to wake up and realize that this is going on. You all know somebody that this has happened to. I really want parents to see the importance behind this. And I want kids to reclaim their voice and be able to break their silence and end their suffering. That is my mission in life.
I don't care if this takes me a lifetime and, you know, I'm doing this at 90 years old. This is, you know, my calling in life and I'm going to be fighting for this until the end.